I've really felt at peace with everything. Um, there are definitely moments where I get a little emotional or sad because I know it's the, the end of something, but I'm also really excited to, uh, to start my next life. So I'm just trying to enjoy it, soak it all in, all the cliches you can think of, um, and then we'll see what happens next. No problem. Next question, third row center. Cassandra Negley with Yahoo Sports. Sue, what is the significance behind coming out of the locker room together with those Griner shirts versus, say, starting the game with them? Yeah, um, I mean, either way you look at it, we, we just wanted to make sure at some point that we were able to, on national television, obviously in front of a, a sold-out crowd, um, put Brittany's name in the forefront. And that was our way of honoring her, our way of... You know, hopefully at some point she sees a picture or something and letting her know that she is always, you know, on our minds and on our hearts. But it's also a way to, to, for have, to have other people, you know, see her name. Maybe someone turned on the TV and doesn't know about the story. and is like, oh, why are they all wearing the same jersey number? And in those moments, it brings awareness. And what that does is it, it, it constantly reminds the Biden administration that we're supporting them. And whatever they need to do to get Brittany home, we're behind them. Right, next question will come third row to your left. Just to piggyback off of that, um, has the all, all of the outpouring of support made step may make retiring any difficult more difficult? And um, do you have any plans to stick around with the W? And what do you think about next? Um, no, it doesn't make it more difficult. Um, it's actually just a nice feeling. I think. I mean, I just said this earlier. Um, the word I'm, I'm landing on is maybe a little bit of closure, right? I think as an athlete, you when you come to the end of your career, so much goes into the decision to actually retire. So the way people have reacted and, and these little moments I get both in Seattle and on the road, um, it just, I know I know it's the right timing for me, but it does, it gives it a little like, okay, this is going to be all right. Like everyone, everyone's getting their moment too that we, we can kind of share. And I don't know what's next. I mean, you know, there's stuff planned, but we'll see. To your right in the first row. Nancy Armour, USA Today. Brianna, uh, how did Ruby like her first All-Star game? <laughs> um, and what was behind the thinking of having her sit on the bench with you? Um, I think Ruby loved her first All-Star game. She got one of those little balls, and that's been in her mouth since she got it. Um, but, no, All-Star game is a, a game to just have fun and, and celebrate, and I wanted to, to bring her on the bench because she's always a good vibe. She always makes everybody a little bit happier, and... She, I think she wanted to crawl. She wanted to go on the court, but we kind of. She's a letter. I know. That was hilarious. <laughs> Next question will come from Zoom. Uh, Willie, go ahead. Willie Ramirez. Oh. Thank you, Willie Ramirez from the Associated Press. For Sue, uh, I got two questions, if I may. Uh, when you were here in Vegas, we talked a little bit about Kelsey Plum for a story mm -hmm. I was working on, and I'm just curious because one of the things you had said is she's so hungry, and you can always count on her going after it. You couldn't have been too surprised about her performance today if you could just comment on how she sort of just went after it. Yeah, um, so we were actually flying when um, the draft that Stewie and Asia did got aired. So I actually didn't see the draft live, but when I, when I saw kind of the order and I was like, dang, Stewie, you should have taken Plum. I was like, Plum needed to go first because you just knew Plum was going to come in this game and, and, like you just said, be super hungry. That's just who she is, and, and I think she's in a great place physically, mentally. Things are starting to click for her, and she's the type of player. And I got to see this firsthand at, at, at Washington, at the University of Washington. When she has her confidence, whew, it's really tough to stop her, and that's what you're seeing right now, just a really confident player. And uh, lastly, two of the last three years have been very poignant in the dub in the bubble with the Say Her Name campaign, and obviously right now with uh, the message for uh, Brittany Griner. How proud are you, number one, but also um, of, of sort of going out with such strong statements, going out in your career in, with such strong statements for the, for the W? Yeah, um, I mean, I could definitely sit here and talk about our league. I'm sure everyone in here has, has heard me speak about the fact that we learned that you know, strength in numbers is, is big for us in terms of the volume of our voice when 144 players are, um, I guess, attacking the same issue at the same time, that's when we see results. But I think for me personally, what's been really amazing about the last couple of years is I think back on my career, and I definitely was part of a shut up and dribble generation where that's what we did. We didn't complain too much. We didn't talk about things too much because we were scared to, or it was kind of 
the vibe, we understood the vibe. It was like an unspoken vibe, but it was there. You know, even coming out as gay, that, that's like not something I would have done in the early part of my career because, oh, what does that mean? And so I'm just really proud for two reasons. One, that we have found our strength in our voice, and I'm just proud that I got to be a part of a small part of it at the end of my career. Uh, next question uh, to your left, second row. Akeem Balin, beyond the W dot com. Um, someone, uh, one for uh, for Sue and one for Stewie. Um, someone had asked Sylvia um, about her post career plans. I was just wondering, uh, what's your post career plans, especially you know with this being your last All Star? And for Stewie, is this you know kind of a uh, kind of a a moment in your career where you're sort of thinking, okay, like you know, advancing into a post Sue career as far as like really being a standard bearer for the W. She's already doing that. Um, for me, you know, I kind of like brush by the last question. Um, I can't imagine I'm not involved in, in the world of basketball, specifically the WNBA. Um, I, don't, I don't know exactly what that looks like yet, but I can't imagine that, that I'm not. Um, I do have other things that I've already started to do, whether it's, you know, working with together and being more involved. Um, the Peyton's Places is going to, I'll be doing a version of that, the basketball side of it. Um, so there's little things that are on my schedule and it's kind of, I think, going to work out great because I'll have something to look forward to, but also time to myself to maybe detox a little bit and to maybe think about what I actually want to do in, you know, what will be my next life. Um, I'm not really looking forward to thinking about post Sue <laughs> career. Uh, I feel like maybe I, I'm just trying to convince her to come back again. I'll just keep trying. We'll see what happens. But um, no, I think you just, chant right now. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> one more year. <laughs> um, no, I mean everything that Sue has done. I will just try and continue that and carry it on. Uh, the way she has continued to elevate and uplift our sport, um, always striving for, for more and to be better. Uh, those are those are the main things. Obviously, the skill speaks for itself, but, you know, to make this league better for the next generation and the next generation like she did for us. All right, we have time for two more questions, one via Zoom. Gabriella, go ahead. Hi, um, I just want to ask a little bit about um, the union, the WNBPA and how that's affected um, the We Are BG campaign, and both of you guys are in leadership positions there. I'm just wondering if you could speak a little bit about the strength of the union over these past couple months in getting BG home. Um, I mean, I think ever since really everybody found out about BG being wrongfully detained, the union was, was there to, to step right in and, and be um, a major facilitator for, for us to, you know, use our platform, use our voice, do as much as we can, make sure the petition is out there, um, and at the same time, um, send a strong message. I think that, you know, they're the ones that are uh, coordinating with most of us, whether it's the T-shirts or the QR code or the, um, like I said, the petition. And, you know, we're, we're all in this fight, this fight together to bring her home. And I think that, you know, when you have, like Sue said earlier, those strength in numbers, um, it makes a bigger splash and we get attention and we're getting people's attention and we need to continue to ask President Biden and the White House to, to bring her home. And our last question uh, in the uh, back standing. Hi, Sue. Stephen Gardner from Nuts and Bolts. So you're one of the best point guards in general to grace the hardwood and kind of being around so many other talents at All-Star Weekend. Can you name some of the other younger guards that you that either catch your eye for something specific or just whose game you appreciate, you know, as well? Yeah. Um, I mean, where to begin? I think today's game showcased a lot of the talent at the guard spot. Um, you know, uh, on our roster, one of my favorite players in the league is Arike. I've said that before. Um, I think she's just so exciting. There's so much potential there, and she's really just getting started in a lot of ways. You know, then you take a player like Plum, Sabrina, they, um, what I like about their stories is I don't think the starts of their career, totally different starts, but didn't necessarily, they didn't start the way they wanted to, but yet they found ways to improve, found ways to turn it around. And I think that can be, that's, that's one of the hardest things to do. 
right? When things aren't going your way, but you find a way to turn it around. So it's, I've been so impressed with those two players. Um, Kalia Copper is so exciting to watch. I mean, literally, you could go down all the guards. Ryan Howard obviously has an amazing future. Again, the best part about all of these players is they're, what, like 26 and younger? And I can tell you now, like, you, you should just, it's only going to get better. You're only going to get smarter. You're only going to get, you know, more skilled. You're going to work on things. So when they enter their prime, which you can argue is probably 28 and up, um, they're going to be even that much more exciting to watch. So I keep saying this, but I'm really, ugh, I'm looking forward to being a fan because I will have played against these players and I'll kind of understand what it is, but I'll also get to watch them grow and, and see how they succeed. Brianna, Sue, thank you. Thank to our you. media, thank you everybody for being here.